Here, near beaches and quiet harbors that lead to the open sea, you'll discover the Kennebunks. Long ago, sea captains and sailors were drawn to this place, and now you will follow the paths they took. Kennebunk and Kennebunkport, two small main towns on the Atlantic coast, friendly coastal villages treasured by those who have been here and those who have come to stay. The towns of Kennebunk and Kennebunkport take their names from the Indian word meaning large stretch of water at rest, which refers to the Kennebunk River. The earliest settlement was named Cape Corpus and included Kennebunkport, Cape Corpus, and Goose Rocks Beach. The settlement at Kennebunk was a part of Wells until 1820. Generations before the arrival of European settlers, Indians spent the summer months farming, hunting, and fishing on the banks of the Kennebunk. The Indians and earliest white settlers coexisted peacefully until 1675, when King Philip's War began. These Native Americans eventually lost control of the land which they had considered their birthright. Their camping place was on a spot near the mouth of the Kennebunk River called Indian Canoe Landing, now the site of Government Wharf. 200 years after their struggle with the white man, they were making summer camps once again. Penobscot Indians from Old Town spent their summers here, and eventually other families joined them. Penobscot and Passamaquoddy tribes were among the first Kennebunkport merchants to cater to vacationers. From their tents, they sold sweet grass baskets and other Indian works. They also sold and rented birch bark canoes. The ladies of Cape Arundel could hire an Indian guide for the afternoon to paddle them upriver for tea. Most welcomed the Indians for their coming was one of Kennebunkport's traditions. In the early 1600s, English settlers were drawn to the area because of the productive fishing grounds here in the Gulf of Maine. The coastal islands, like those near Cape Corpus, proved to be an excellent base from which the fishermen could work. The inner harbors created by the islands provided safe mooring for ships and the distance from shore allowed a certain amount of protection against surprise Indian attacks. Today, the fishermen of Cape Porpus daily make their way to the harbor. They set forth to harvest the sea which supports them, just as their forefathers had done. Drive out to the end of Pier Road in Cape Porpus, and you can witness this daily ritual, which has been a part of the area for over a century. Fishing was not the only way of life for the residents of the Kennebunks. The year 1755 marked the beginning of the glory years for the Kennebunk River. Shipbuilding had begun, particularly in the area surrounding Durrell's Bridge called the Landing. Over 20 shipbuilding firms from 1766 to 1867 crowded the banks of that one and one-tenth mile stretch of river. Each launching was an event, and hundreds turned out to see the schooners set sail. In 1890, the launching of David Clark's Golden Ball brought a crowd of nearly 2,500. This three-masted schooner was a full three decks high, weighed 1,273 tons, and was 188 feet long. Today, her nameplate hangs in the Graves Memorial Library in Kennebunkport. All those ships are no longer launched in the Kennebunk River. The boat building tradition lives on at the Landing School, located on River Road just past Durrell's Bridge. The Landing School offers courses in wooden boat building and design. Students can be seen daily working on the boats they have been trained to build, and visitors are welcome. Much of the history of shipping and shipbuilding in the area has been collected and is available from the Kennebunkport Historical Society, located at the intersection of North Street and Old Cape Road. Out front, you'll find the old fog bell from the Goat Island Light in Cape Porpoise, and to one side, the original small office building of the Clark Shipbuilding Yard, which is now open as a maritime museum. Virtually none of what we consider the downtown section of Kennebunk existed in the early years of the community. However, the inland population gradually grew as businesses took advantage of the abundant natural resources. In 1758, Colonel Joseph Storer began an extensive lumbering operation on the Mousam River with a sawmill and dam 
built on the present site of the Lafayette Center. This sawmill brought a large number of workmen and their families to Kennebunk. These families helped develop what is now Main Street Kennebunk. By the turn of the 20th century, the shipbuilding era was coming to a close. The ability of railroads to transport local freight had put an end to the coastal fleet. But ironically, as the railroad was taking business away from the sea, it was bringing to the area its newest economic base, the Summer Visitor. The first passenger train ran in 1873. At the height of summer, outgoing passengers crowded the platform and carriages from nearby hotels and boarding houses awaited the incoming guests. The river provided the main source of entertainment for these seasonal visitors, be it swimming, rowing, sailing, or canoeing. One of the main attractions to the Kennebunk area today is the Kennebunk beaches. The sparkling Atlantic with its invigorating salt water, white sands, and endless tidal pools is among our most precious natural resources. Up the coast in Kennebunkport, you'll find Goose Rocks Beach, a quiet and subdued beach. Any native can tell you how to get to Goose Rocks Beach. You go to the clock farm and take a right. Tourists and natives alike enjoy the tranquility and the beauty of this wonderful beach. All are welcome. However, parking permits are required for residents and non-residents. These can be purchased at the Kennebunkport Town Office on Elm Street or the police station on Route 9 in Cape Porpoise. Three more beaches lie along the Kennebunk Seacoast just south of the river. Gooch's Beach is by far the most popular with its wide expanse of sand especially at low tide. It provides a place for many natives and visitors to soak up the sun and build sand castles. Kennebunk Beach, also called Middle Beach, has more rocks than sand, but provides an abundance of tidal pools for all to explore. The third beach, called Lord's Beach, has a playground for children. Locally known as Mother's Beach, this beach is protected from much of the larger ocean surf and therefore has gentler waves and a more gradual slope, making it a very suitable beach for small children. Parking permits are required for these beaches also and are available at the Kennebunk Town Office or the police station on the weekends, both located on the corner of Main Street and Route 35. If you enjoy spending time on the ocean, there are many boat rides and excursions to choose from. Whether your interests lie in sailing, ocean fishing, whale watching, or just a pleasant short cruise, there are a number of charter companies and excursion boats on the Kennebunk River. Spending the day on board a whale watching vessel is one of the most interesting and educational ways to experience the Atlantic Ocean. Some vessels like this one have their own marine biologist who's able to identify specific species of dolphin and whales and many of them have been given names. Today, some of the individuals that we came across would be Flask, a female that we see very, very frequently, a female humpback, um, Half Moon, a male that we see fairly commonly. Um, a cow and calf, a mother and baby, a very friendly mother and baby, but not an individuals that we were able to identify on a day like today. There's many different humpbacks, so obviously we can't know every one of them, but someone like myself that's used to doing it normally can tell you and identify at least some of the individual humpback whales and tell you a little more about them as individual whales. Coming out and seeing an animal that weighs 50 tons being so close to you that you could almost touch it gets to a point where it's, it's almost a spiritual encounter. You're getting so close to an animal that's so very much like ourselves in a lot of ways and also so very much different. For those who never leave home without their clubs, there are three golf courses in the area. Cape Arundel Golf Course, Webb Hannock Golf Club, and the Dutch Elm Golf Course. The Kennebunks are also a good place to jog or ride a bike, but use caution along the narrow, winding roads. At the same time the area was growing wealthy from its involvement in shipping and shipbuilding, the large homes of captains and craftsmen rose along the banks of the Kennebunk River. Many of the affluent taste and culture of that era have been maintained in Kennebunk and Kennebunkport to this day. One example 
is the Knot House, also known as White Columns. This Greek revival house is located in the heart of the Kennebunkport Historic District on the corner of Route 9 and South Main Street. White Columns was built in the 1850s as one of only a handful in Maine to retain original wallpapers, carpets, and furnishings. In 1981, Miss Elizabeth Knott gave the house to the Kennebunkport Historical Society in memory of her brother Richard Allen Knott. One of Kennebunk's most famous and most photographed residences is the Wedding Cake House on Summer Street, which is also Route 35. Inspired by Milan's Gothic cathedrals, Shipbuilder George Washington Bourne started carving the wooden house decorations in 1852 using only hand tools. He completed the work shortly before his death. The name Wedding Cake House comes from the legend that the house was built by an early sea captain in an attempt to console his bride for not providing a traditional wedding cake at their wedding. To see additional homes of a bygone era, Take the walking tour of Kennebunk's National Register Historic District offered by the Brick Store Museum on Main Street in Kennebunk. The tour begins at the museum and includes many outstanding examples of 19th century architectural styles. The tour concludes at the Taylor Berry House, built in 1803 by William Berry. A federal period residence, it offers a look at the lifestyle of a Maine seafaring and shipbuilding family. The Brick Store Museum is one of the centers for many of Kennebunk's historical activities. It houses permanent collections, historical archives, and an extensive reference library. The Brick Store Museum was built by William Lord as a dry goods store in 1825. It was the first brick building in Kennebunk. Throughout the years, it has been occupied by a tailor, lawyers, the Mousam Water Company, and the Good Templars and Rotary Club were at one time upstairs. The museum was founded in 1936. Each summer, you can view wonderful exhibits which add to the history of the Kennebunks. These include paintings, sculptures, and artifacts assembled from the museum's vast collections. For more information, contact the Brick Store Museum. Getting around on foot in the Kenny Bunks is quite easy. We recommend that you leave your car at your inn or park at one of the town's surrounding parking areas. Parking is available at the Consolidated School on Route 9, about a half mile east of the square in Kenny Bunkport, and at St. Martha's Church on North Street, just a few blocks from Dock Square. Some free parking is also available at many of the businesses in Lower Village. There is a town parking lot behind Allison's Restaurant in Dock Square, and on Main Street Kennebunk, you can park in front of most downtown merchants. One of the best ways to see the area is on the in-town trolley. The trolley has stops including Kennebunk Beach, Dock Square, and many of the accommodations in the area. Enjoy this unique form of transportation through the village streets and along the rocky coast while listening to the informative tour guide. Shopping opportunities in the Kennebunks are almost unlimited during the tourist and holiday seasons, presenting a kaleidoscopic array of goods and keepsakes. Dock Square, in the heart of Kennebunkport, is probably the best known of the shopping areas. Lower Village, across the bridge from Dock Square, also has a variety of unique gift shops, restaurants, and bakeries, all within a short walk. Just up Route 35 on Main Street in Kennebunk, you'll find a vibrant business community with a wide range of shopping opportunities. The Kennebunks abound with exceptional and unique eateries, from takeout lobster, clams, and seafood, to the most extraordinary gourmet feast. Whatever cuisine or atmosphere you desire, you're sure to take pleasure in the variety offered to you in the Kennebunks. No visit to this area would be complete without a stop at the Seashore Trolley Museum on Log Cabin Road. The museum boasts one of the most complete collections of old mass transit vehicles anywhere. Enjoy a three and a half mile ride on one of their authentic restored electric trolley cars. Pay a visit to the gift shop or take a close hand look at restorations in progress, like the Boston Elevated Railway Station 
which was brought here from Boston by seagoing barge. The Kennebunks host a multitude of historical and modern churches of all denominations. They welcome travelers and tourists to a variety of services, which can be found listed in most newspapers and tourist publications. As you travel out Ocean Avenue past the mouth of the Kennebunk River, you'll see St. Anne's Church, a wonderful old stone building built over a century ago. The President and Mrs. Bush often attend services at St. Anne's during their local stays. One of the most spectacular shrines is the St. Anthony Monastery, also referred to as the Franciscan Monastery. St. Anthony's Monastery is situated across the Kennebunk River from Kennebunk Port. Just follow Route 35 towards Kennebunk Beach. The area was first discovered by the French explorer Samuel de Champlain in 1604. After various entrepreneurial owners, the estate was purchased by Lithuanian Franciscans in 1947. In 1952, the Tudor-style house was embellished with the Shrine of St. Anthony. Magnificent and unique shrines and monuments are set in the beautiful surrounding gardens. There is also a wooded path leading to the boathouse, an exciting outlook to the Atlantic Ocean. Modern lodgings and accommodations are available for those seeking a weekend retreat or pilgrimage. Many cultural activities are hosted in the Kennebunks. You'll find art shows each summer and numerous galleries with works in all media and styles. The major shows include the Kennebunk River Club Art Show and the River Tree Arts Outdoor Art Festival, which takes place on the first Saturday in August. River Tree Arts is one of the primary cultural organizations of the Kennebunks. In addition to graphic arts and writing, the programs of this group include children's programs and innumerable concerts throughout the year. Besides fine art, another subject of intrigue to visitors is antiques. With the Kennebunks' early and affluent heritage, the area is rich with original and period antiques. Some of these can be found at numerous auctions held during the summer months or at a number of shops in the area. The natural beauty of southern coastal Maine has been preserved for all to enjoy at the Wells National Estuarine Reserve. Within the reserve, you'll find Laudholm Farm, the Rachel Carson Wildlife Refuge Lands, and the Laudholm State Park. This four-mile coastal sanctuary is a natural ecosystem, home for a wide variety of resident and transient wildlife. A guided nature tour through the reserve can make for a pleasant afternoon. Along the rocky coast, two of Kennebunkport's natural wonders still delight and sometimes drench the summer visitor. Traveling out Ocean Avenue, you'll find Spouting Rock, a natural cleft in the rocks. With an incoming tide and the wind just right, it's easy to see how this place got its name. A little further down the road on the west side of a sand bottom cove is Blowing Cave. Here, a natural cave has been hollowed out of solid granite by the forces of erosion and time. As the tide comes in, the ocean waves crash into the cave and make a roar that the Indians said was the voice of the Great Spirit. And just across the cove, you'll see what may now be one of our most famous landmarks, the summer residence of President and Mrs. George Bush. Presently known as Walker's Point, the peninsula was originally called Flying Point due to the abundance of seabirds or Point Vesuvius because of the spouting and crashing waves on its rocky shoreline. The land was purchased by the president's grandfather, George Herbert Walker, in 1902, and two cottages were built. There have been significant changes to the point over the years, 
but the G.H. Walker Cottage remains virtually unchanged since its completion. The building has 15 rooms, including six bedrooms and baths. When Bert Walker and his parents bought the land, they knew they were getting a prized location that would be enjoyed by their family for generations. The Bush's life in Kennebunkport is informal and highly visible, with sporting activities of all kinds, from tennis and golf to boating in Fidelity, the president's high-powered cigarette boat. Barbara Bush often spends hours happily working on what she calls her therapy. Large, active families are a Bush tradition. The Bushes can be seen frolicking about the grounds with their grandchildren, enjoying a warm summer's day. Of course, keep in mind that access in this area is restricted and enforced by the Secret Service and Coast Guard, especially during presidential visits. The end of summer does not mean the end of tourism in the Kennebunks. Autumn is a warm and colorful season. Shops and restaurants become less crowded, and you can observe the beautiful fall colors as you ride or walk through these postcard New England towns. Christmas time is always a festive and magical season in the Kennebunks. Christmas Prelude is held annually during the first weekend in December. There are concerts and tree lightings, caroling, beautiful holiday decorations. And you'll even witness Santa Claus himself arriving for the Christmas season by lobster boat. Most merchants, restaurants, and inns remain open through the holiday season. If you'd like more information concerning area activities, accommodations, dining, recreation, and other general information about the Kennebunks, please call or visit the Kennebunk Kennebunkport Chamber of Commerce located at Cooper's Corner in Lower Village. Kennebunk and Kennebunkport, with such character and charm, it's easy to understand why the Kennebunks continue to be a special place for visitors year-round. Experience the folklore of the past and the splendor of the present that we have all come to enjoy in the Kennebunks. <laughs>